Hi everyone. Today we are going to be doing a walkthrough of Microsoft Teams. It is a recently deployed collaboration tool that you can use between all of your team members. You can use it to chat, you can use it to share files, you can use it to uh, do a lot of team collaboration and it provides a way for everybody to use one platform um, for all of your meetings and, and um, everything like that for your projects. So you're able to see my Teams client here. This is the desktop client. You are also able to get to Teams by going to your Office 365 portal and you should see a Teams app. I mean, if you do not see it here, straight by default, mine is right here, then you click on all apps. And once you see listed here is everything that you have um, an, a license for in your O365 uh, environment. So we click on the Teams right here, and this is just another way to be able to access it. Um, if you're going to be using Teams to, to schedule your meetings, chat with your coworkers, your teammates, then I do recommend you download the web app here, but, uh, the Windows app, which is the desktop client, but you are able to use Teams in the browser if you'd like. If you do not have Teams um, downloaded and you are invited to a Teams meeting, it will open that up for you in the browser um, directly. So Teams has the ability to uh, chat with some of your coworkers. Um, you can see them here, they're listed right here. I have some suggested in my list here. You, depending on your O365 settings, can also collaborate and add additional contacts for external users that are in a different tenant. But again, that is something that is an O365 setting. Um, you can add in additional contacts here if you'd like. Here's where you can just add a new contact and you can do it right here. And if you do have any chats, here is directly where you can start that conversation. You can just click on whoever it is and you can say hello. Or you, and then where, if whenever they do respond back to you, you will get that notification down in your bottom tray to alert you that you have a recent message or a call or alert you to recent activity. You can also share files between your conversation. And there's a couple of other uh, tabs up here at the top um, if you are active in communicating with each other in your Teams client. So then there is your Teams tab. And this is where all of the teams that you have been invited to or that you create are going to display. Um, so you can see right here, I have these three teams right here that I am a member of. Um, this one is an employee reporting portal. This one is connected to our project online environment. And a couple of additional channels and tabs have been added up here at the top to show me that project online information. You can see I have one right here called Instant, and this is just a welcome to the team. It's just a place for us to collaborate. If we're working on any documentation together, we need to have a quick, hey, did you see an email from so-and-so? Here's a way for you to have that conversation. And this does get posted to everybody who is a member of this group. Everybody will see it, and everybody has the ability to respond. You are able to do app mentions using the app. You just type in that app right there and it will automatically populate um, a list of suggestions from other members of the team that, that you are currently in. You can see in my project management office team right here that there are several different channels. I have a general channel, I have an engineering channel, manufacturing, and each of these can have a different set of users that belong to each one. They can be um, public for anybody on this channel. They can be private to include maybe only a few key members. You can see I also have two additional here that are currently hidden, but I can always make them um, displayed. Underneath that, I do have a collapse se uh, session for, section for my, my hidden teams. Um, if I do decide that I want to hide one of these, maybe make the ones at the top, the ones that I visit most frequently, or the ones that I'd like to see active at all times, I can put them up there and I can hide my other ones down here. Um, I know sometimes if you are sharing your screen and you want to make sure that some details are kept, kept hidden, then this might be a way for you to do that um, and just make sure that that is collapsed for the time being and then you can, you can update that once you've finished. So to create a brand new team, um, you can just go ahead and click down here where it says join or create a team. And then you're presented with a couple of different options. I am just gonna choose uh, to create a Teams team. And so I'm gonna click on create team. And I am going to build this one from scratch. Every new team that is created does create a brand new O365 group. Um, we will be doing a follow-up video where I show you from an admin perspective what the teams looks like from there, um, how to manage it, how to view it, and uh, because typically once you delete a team from the Microsoft Teams app, it will still 
have a, an O365 team in the back end that an admin only can see that they would also have to clean up as part of that process. Um, so as I mentioned, you can build your own team, which will generate that that O365 group, or you can create from an existing O365 group. So you are presented with a couple of options here. Um, I am going to go ahead and just build my team entirely from scratch. That way I can I know that what I'm working with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on build team from scratch and I'm presented with a couple of different options here. I can create a private team where I, I need to specifically invite people and they need to be invited to join my team. Or I can create a public team where anybody in my organization can join on their own. And then I can have an org wide team where everyone in the organization automatically is joined to the team um, regardless of if they are invited or not. So I am going to for this, so I'm going to go ahead and create um, a private team. And so I'm going to go ahead and give it a, a name of marketing department. We're going to say we're just going to go ahead and create a department wide team and I'm going to invite the users around it. You can add a description in here um, if you would like to know what the give your, um, your users a description of what the team's all about. And I'm going to go ahead and click create. And so once this does, as I mentioned, it is going to create that O365 group and you do get this nice message here saying nice work. You've created a great team. So I'm going to go ahead and type in here. If you do know of the users that you are going to be adding to this team, you can click and you can type it right in here. Say so I want to go ahead and type in a couple of users here and then I'll just click add. You can see it is populated here. They are a member and here is where I can change their access. Um, in Teams, there is either a member or an owner. An owner is somebody who has permissions to invite others. They have permissions to manage it, create additional channels, or as a member can collaborate. They can chat, they can add documents. They have uh, more of the member role. So I'm going to leave both of them as members for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and click close. And so once my team was created, it automatically populated it right here and it gives me a general channel. Um, I can click on this and I can, um, I can look at my channel notifications specifically just for that one channel. And I can say, do I want to be notified anytime there is a new post? Um, you have a couple of options there. If you want to have any mentions, if you want to be notified anytime that there is a channel mention, you can have that here. You can also pin this, you can manage it, you can get a direct link to it if you needed to send it to somebody via email. And then you can see up at the top, you automatically are presented with a posts and here is where you can type a conversation. You're like, today we created the team and it will be posted here. And team members can reply to it directly from here. I'm gonna reply to my own message, but here is where you can have that option to come and do it. Um, if you have a spelling error, then you can come in and you can come in here and you can type it again. Um, and you, but you do have a, and you can do some different, um, different emojis here and you can have, you have a couple of different options just in the messages that you created. You can't edit somebody else's message, but you can edit your own. Um, also in this post, you can add additional team members here. You can create additional channels. And then there is um, an FAQ or a frequently asked questions section that you can open if you do have questions. There is a help section here that does give you a bunch of information about has uh, live training, job well done. And then here is an admin section here. So you can also create additional channels. Say I would like to have a sub channel in my marketing department team for um, just a few select group of, of users. So I'm going to go ahead and click add channel. I'm going to add in here and say here is a um, confidential channel and I can have a description. And then here is where I can say for this specific channel within a certain team, I would like this to be private. I would like this to be um, only accessible to people that I invite a real limited group of users. I'm going to go ahead and click next and it's going to immediately add this um, this channel to my team. So I'm going to go ahead and skip that. And you can see that there is a lock icon now. Um, that does mean that it is private. Even more locked down than the rest. That means that these ones, this one does have special permissions. And I can do, use my ellipse here and I have a couple of additional options here. I can manage this channel. Here's where I can manage my group members and my settings for this. Um, I can add members. I can edit it. I can delete it. And then I can also leave the channel. So there are a couple of different ways that you can use this. And um, there is also a file section up here. If there are files that need to be associated, maybe you have templates or documents or working files that you're working on as an entire department that need to be available. You are able to, you can drag and drop them here. You can upload and then you can copy a link directly to this library. 
um, you can open it in SharePoint because this does also uh, create a, a team SharePoint site whenever you do create a Teams in Microsoft Teams. And there is also um, a, a wiki page here um, for you, for each team that is created. And again, this is automatically created whenever you do join it here. So the Microsoft Teams desktop application also provides you a way to do your calendar. Um, this is, you can schedule your meetings directly from here. If you do, uh, if when, once you do log in, it will connect it with your Outlook calendar. And so you can see all of your meetings directly on here. Um, I have my call right now. If I wanted to click on it, I can join the call directly from right here. I can chat, I can cancel the meeting. Just a lot of the very basic navigations when you're scheduling a meeting. You can also edit it, edit the meeting options. And I can also create a brand new Teams meeting directly from inside my, my client here. So I'm go ahead and click on the time frame that I'd like. You can also create a long meeting at the same time. Um, I'm gonna say this is my new Teams meeting. Here is where, where I can say that my location is if you do have a physical location. And then you can set the start and end dates. And then here is where you can put the meeting description. Um, today we are going to be reviewing Microsoft Teams. Um, you do have a scheduling assistant here. Um, since I am the only one in this meeting, it does only show my current availability. But if I was to add somebody else to my channel here, um, I do have a couple of additional options. You can see it pre-populated this right here, um, overlapping times that both me and Dan are available to meet. If I click on my scheduling assistant now, you can see that now there is a double layer here and I can click on different time frames. It'll adjust the time of my meeting, but it will tell me whether or not we are both available or you can see right here where we um, where there is a conflict. So once I go back, uh, once I've determined the time for my meeting, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click schedule. And once that does that, it will put it on my calendar. It will send out those meeting invites. And it'll show it to me right here. I'm gonna go ahead and click close. So you can see my new Teams meeting is right there. And um, I do have the ability to drag and drop it. We used to have the ability. Now we're gonna come in here, we're gonna edit. And you can edit the day. Say I accidentally scheduled on the wrong day. I'm gonna click. I'm going to update my meeting right here. Um, you do have a couple of different options for navigating through your calendar as well. Um, you can look at it at, uh, at the day level at the week or the work week level and then if you want to if you need to scroll forward to see what's coming up um, in March and April you are able to or use this drop down here and then if you need to jump back to today you do have this today icon right here and it will immediately sh shift back your schedule to show you what's on your calendar for today and there's also a meet now if you need to immediately if you need to start a meeting right now we can go ahead and do that and then you have a calls team um, section here. And this call section is where you can you can call users, you can add contacts. If anybody does call you and you're away from your desk, there is a pre-populated voice recording that will show up that allows somebody else to leave a voice message for you. So if you do have any, that will show up here in your voicemail section. And you do have a history, and it also tell you tells you the length of time that you are on the call. Um, you can make a call right here, and again, you can add any to your contact section right here. You have a file section here. Anytime that any user shares a file with you, whether it's in a team or a chat or a meeting, um, they do show up for you in your recent files here because once they share it with you, you have to download it to be able to access it. So right here, you do see um, the name of the document and then how long ago it was modified. And if I did need to click on any of these right here, I do have the option to download them. Um, or I can click on the ellipse over here to be able to download. Download, get a link, open online. There is a Microsoft Teams section here for my files and also a download section. And then here is where you can access your personal OneDrive. Um, and it's, this is populated here too with things in, like as I mentioned, in your specific OneDrive. Um, you can open this in the browser as well by clicking open in OneDrive or purchase additional storage uh, right here at the bottom. So up at the top here is your activity feed. Um, if you have a call or a missed call or a voicemail or a chat, it will alert you right here um, with an activity and it will tell you a one, a two, a three, how many um, activities you've missed since uh, you last clicked on this feed here. Um, if you are on your team's client, then that, then that might not populate for you. It's only if you are away um, or something has happened since the last time you've opened it. 
Um, up here in the top, you do have the option to click on your um, initials here for your presence indicator. And similar to Skype, uh, you are able to determine your presence indicator just by clicking on this right here. And then you can determine which one you'd like it to display. Uh, when you are in a meeting, it will automatically populate you to say busy or if you're sharing your screen, do not disturb so that other users are alerted as well. Um, you can set a specific status message right there so that if people message you, you can type in something like I'm in a meeting, I'm on vacation, you can't have that shown um, and then set a time frame for how often you'd like that uh, for how often you'd like that message to go out for. Um, you can also, there are a couple of other additional settings that you can do in your own Teams client. And then also down here, there are several keyboard short key, uh, shortcuts that you can use if you need help navigating through. And then you can log, log sign out. And then here is where you can, um, if you'd like to download a mobile app, there is one that you can download um, and it will log you in. It will alert you similar to the Teams client here anytime that there is a message for you. It will bring it up on a phone, just like a text message. Um, so you do have that option to, even if you're away from your desk, always be up to date on what's going on in your Teams client here. And there is a check for updates option here, although I have personally found that Teams will update my client automatically for me. Um, it is something that is set in the settings and it, is, it, will, it does automatically update it. Sometimes I open up my team, Teams client and it automatically says you have the most recent version of Teams, enjoy. And so I can, uh, I don't even have to worry about updating my Teams client here. So I hope you have enjoyed your walkthrough of Microsoft Teams and we will be um, having several more videos. So please stay tuned. Bye.